Kia ora everybody. Um, welcome to this afternoon's ZUI on accessing rapid antigen tests through the close contact exemption scheme. Um, I've had a few queries through recently about accessing the scheme is not as easy as it could be. Um, and part of that is there's a whole lot of words wrapped around it. And when I first sent out the emails to the Synod superintendents and to Taha Māori, that they unfortunately had this big screed of emails to read through. So what I'm going to go through today is about the scheme um, and, and providing an understanding of the conditions that apply to being able to access the scheme. Um, so there's two sides about this. One is understanding your, your ability to access the scheme and then how you actually use it once you're in it. So hopefully this will give quite a full picture of how the scheme works. Now, I do apologize, my notes, which I normally have on my second screen have disappeared. So um, I may forget some key things, but this PowerPoint will be made available after we've finished and all my notes are available on there as always. So again, this presentation is gonna be quite word heavy, which I don't really like, but the key thing about this is that the exemption scheme is about our allowing critical workers back into the workplace as long as they're returning a negative rat test prior to every shift that they work while their household is in isolation. Um, so an understanding of what a critical worker is from the church's point of view, it's about the social services that we provide. And these can come in the form of the food distribution. So if you've got food, um, food banks or you're providing community outreach lunches or dinners or morning teas, um, certainly within our missions and perhaps some of our parishes, if you're providing social housing, um, then the people undertaking that work are considered critical workers. Uh, our, our ministers whether they're lay or ordained, certainly if they're undertaking funeral services, they're absolutely included in the critical work. Um, I've, I think I may have stretched the meaning of it a little bit to say one of the other criteria is that if the operation was to close due to COVID, um, people being away for COVID isolation, would there be an impact to the community? And I'm thinking that there's a lot of op shops that perhaps would be in that boat as well, that if there was enough um, people or volunteers not being available for the op shop, then um, that may impact the community. Of course, all the parishes will be in a better uh, position to understand their needs um, than I would be. So, so a lot of the integrity of this scheme will be upon the people that are applying um, to get access to the rats. So when we look at the testing regime for a normal household, so as I said earlier, my household's in isolation at the moment as well. Um, I don't count as a critical worker um, because first of all, I can work from home, but also I don't uh, work in any of the social service areas. So in our household, we would need the one or two tests to recognize there's a COVID positive case in the household. And then we'd, we'd, we would need an additional two tests for me as the household contacts on day three I test and then on day seven I test. So all up for our household of two people, that would be four tests. If we had another person in the household that was a critical worker and they want to return to work or they're able to return to work, so long as they're um, providing a negative rapid antigen test every day, they would obviously need a bucket load more tests. Um, so that's what the scheme is about, is to provide those rapid antigen tests to the critical workers so that they can leave household isolation and continue working. Um, so if we look at the isolation periods, if you're COVID positive, you would leave isolation after you're 24 hours symptom free. So the earliest you'd be able to get out would be day eight, but you'd still need to be 24 hours symptom free. So if you continued to feel symptoms after day seven or day eight, you would just continue until you're symptom free. And then the following day, you're allowed out of isolation. 
uh, your housemates, if you're a household contact, so long as you return a negative test on day three and day seven, then on day eight, you're allowed out of isolation. For our critical workers in the household, they test every day that they go to work until such time as that first case, the COVID positive case, is symptom free. So there's a slight difference between just a household contact and a critical worker. So what this means is um, I spoke with somebody today and they said they had symptoms for three weeks. If there was a critical worker in their household that, who, who was going back to work every day, that critical worker would have been doing rat tests for three weeks. So that's the scope of what this scheme provides is access to those tests for the critical workers to return to work. Um, and there are some conditions to the scheme. As, as I said, you know, you need to be a critical worker and there needs to be a COVID positive case in your household. So the scheme is not there to provide access to free rats so you can create a stash in your house. Um, it's not there for work that's not associated with those social service um, undertakings that the church puts in place. So unfortunately for ministers who want to ensure that they're COVID free when they go out and do their pastoral care work, those rats need to be purchased separately and they don't come from the connectional office. It would be up to the, the parish or the organisation that the minister is, is undertaking the work for to provide those rats. Um, I don't expect everybody to be able to read this. This will be made available later. Once you meet those two criteria of being a a critical worker and having a COVID positive case in your household, there's also conditions that when you do go back to work that need to be met. So at work, you need to wear a mask. You need to be, um, everybody around you needs to be aware that if they share your space, they should also wear a mask. Um, all the infection prevention controls that you can put in place are in place. That when you go to work, you're only going to work. It's not, it's not a get out of jail free card that says you can go then to the shops or to cafes if you're on the exemption scheme. So there is a lot of care that's wrapped around this because um, one, it's to protect the people that you come into contact with when the work that you do is that the outreach to the community. So we're looking after our vulnerable people again. Um, so to access the scheme through the church, what you do is contact your synod representative. So I've sent an email out to them uh, earlier this month with all of the details. They need to undertake the screening to maintain the integrity of our um, participation in the scheme. So they'll just check that, hey, yes, you do do critical work for the church and that you have a COVID positive household contact. What they'll then do is send you out an email that has all the conditions on it. And for those Synod representatives who are, who are listening to me now, I haven't sent that part of the email out. I've only discovered it today. So I'll be sending that out after this Zooey. So they'll send out an email to people that are applying to the scheme. It will have all of the conditions that need to be met in your workplace. And it will also have the code that you will need when you apply for the rat tests. So if you're a household contact or COVID positive contact, there's an online request process for rats. It's the same process if you're a critical worker, except you just say that you're a critical worker and you enter in this number. Um, I'll take you through the online process of this shortly. So it's, it's simple to apply for the scheme through the church. You contact a synod representative or your Tataha Māori representative. They'll just screen to make sure that, yes, you fit the criteria. They'll send you through an email, and then you apply for your uh, rats online and enter the number that is provided. I'm not providing the number on the website or in this particular ZOE, because, again, with trying to protect the integrity of our participation, um, that screening process needs to be gone through. I'm not just going to hand out the number to everybody. 
So uh, hopefully this will work. We're going to go and go through the process of requesting rats online. So I'm just going to um, swap the sharing of what screen we're looking at. So hopefully now you're all looking at a website and it's talking about are you or someone you're caring for finding it difficult to breathe, so on and so forth. Just a standard uh, questionnaire. I'm not experiencing any of these. And we're going to start now. So they ask for your phone number. I'm not going to take you through the entire process because I don't want the rats. They're going to send me a verification code to my cell phone number. Uh, there's a privacy statement wrapped around all of this because it is a health process that we're going through. So you can apply for yourself or someone else online. Um, so when Shane said he was feeling unwell, I went and applied for it because I'm the website person and he's not. So you can apply for whoever you need to apply for. And this is the this is where the two paths split. If I was a standard household um, contact, I'd just hit no, I'm not a critical worker, but we're looking at critical workers as part of the exemption scheme. So yes, we are a critical worker. We enter in the number for the church, and then you'll go through after that and answer a whole bunch of questions about the sort of work that you do, um, and so on and so forth. So as I said, I'm not entering that number on in there, but they're all quite standard um, questions that they ask, just a little bit about your symptoms. So what's triggering your request for the rats? And then, and then they'll go, so it's just a bunch of yes or no answers. What will happen after that is, You'll then go through, you'll go through the process and just a moment, please call her. We seem to have a bit of a glitch. And they'll send through a confirmation text to your cell phone. And this is what it'll look like. So this is the text that I received um, after Shane said he had symptoms and I ordered some rats. They sent me a text. I went down and picked them up from a collection site. So they even supply the URL if you don't know where your closest collection site is to pick up the rats. So thinking back to the earlier uh, slide that I showed, if you were a critical worker, you'll need to take along a copy of the email that the Synod superintendent or the Synod representative sends to you. It will have details about the church's inclusion in the exemption scheme. And then you'll be able to pick up much more, many more rats than you would have if you were a standard household contact. Now, some of, sorry, I'll let this play through. It's going to play through a couple of times. And it's understanding about how rats work that a PCR test will pick up the virus sooner than you're really, really infectious and a lot later and a rat test has a shorter period of time because it's dependent on the viral load. Now, the viral load is also dependent on how well you've responded to the vaccination um, and the boosters. So at the moment, I'm testing negative, and I think it's a combination of uh, my husband's not, not uh, spreading as much virus because of his vaccination, and I'm not going to pick up as much virus because of the vaccination again. So um, I've got my fingers crossed. I'm going to have a mild form of COVID if it does hit. So when, when, when and if you're a minister and you go, I'd like to take a rat test before I take Sunday service to know whether I'm positive or not, you may still have symptoms, but the rat test will be returning a negative test result. And I think that's something that we need to be aware of because the 
what we need to do now is actually pay more attention to our symptoms and have the rat reinforce what we're thinking rather than just solely rely on the rat to give us our results because we know what our bodies are doing um, more than two little lines that turn up on a stick. So um, that's why I'm going, I actually think I do have COVID, it's mild, but the rat test is returning negative at the moment. So it's an awareness thing, um, which is why if you're going to return to work as a critical worker, you still need to be undertaking all of the protective behaviours that you can undertake in the workplace wearing masks, making sure you've got physical distance between people. The conditions even go so far as to say that you should eat your lunch alone uh, because at that stage you're taking your mask off. So you don't want to be uh, even potentially passing infection on to anybody else. Um, so that's that's the, the story behind accessing rats and using them as part of the close contact exemption scheme. Does anybody have any questions on that? Um, part of the process, of course, will we'll need, Synod representatives will need to know who is doing what across the Synod or have access to that information so that they can undertake the screening process. Now, I see that Sharon's online. Sharon is the first person who sort of said, hey, um, somebody's somebody's asked a question about uh, how we access the rats. Sharon, can you tell us how that went for you? Just unmute yourself, please. Can you hear me? Can we can. Order? Sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, as Trudy has said, she kind of sent a email out to us. So to our set of leaders, or, or um, so they highlighted for me to probably let our people know by email just as briefly as I could about what Trudy was going to send out to the whole church. So yeah, I did that and I, I uh, got confirmation from Peter Baltus and Tikani who checked that and then I sent it out to our people. And uh, in that response, we had a couple of queries that were not probably quite sitting right with what went out, just in that information. And I just really simplified Trudy's uh, panoi because I felt that was just probably for the people that were going to administer or be the administration for it, um, that information, most of it, because it would have been too, we felt it would have been too confusing for our people. Um, oh. Before I, uh, we got, I got the inquiries, um, Bella had another look at it and then she sent out a more simplified version, again, relating to how Te Taha Māori works. So from there, I had about five inquiries about it from our Minata Iwi and our presbyters. And I just basically used the first version of Trudy's um, Pano that she sent out, and that was just asking the questions and going over uh, what the scheme was about. And it was for what Trudy had talked about earlier. But we didn't eventually go through the whole scheme because we found out that the people that rung me weren't in a COVID uh, isolation in their household, and they were quite fine to go out and work. I think. The reaction is they saw this opportunity and looked at it as a way of, of maybe accessing their rat test to help them with their work. So I just went over that, that part of it and just said that they didn't qualify for what the scheme was about. Because it was mainly about um, 
what Trudy was talking about earlier. So that was my experience. And we haven't had any any of anyone else bring other than the five people. So I guess at this stage, our people will understand what that scheme is all about. Yeah. Thank you for that. Catherine, you've got your hand up there. I do. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Lay it on us. <laughs> okay, so I, I just um I have a couple of concerns. Yes. Um uh, particularly as Synod Superintendent, uh, and we don't have a secretary, so guess who's going to be landed with the inquiries? It will be me. So it seems to me to be very heavy-handed administratively. Um, and I don't know whether that's, that's fact or fallacy, but that's my perception. So I guess my question is, like, Rack, Tests, if you are symptomatic or if you are in a, um, a household with someone who has, um, who has tested positive, rat tests are free regardless. So I guess my question is around, so what's, what's the benefit of going through, jumping through a number of hoops, being a critical worker and actually just doing it as a, as a, Household contact. Joe Blogs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, is it the number of rat tests? So that's that's my first question. So what, what's the benefit of doing it this way? Because it seems to me that if it's just the number of rat tests, then it would have to be really significant um, for me to buy into it. The second is I'm really aware that we had a parish in Christchurch who had 1,500 rat tests to give away through wow. applying to the CDHB. Yeah. And so um, I'm also aware that those have been distributed amongst the parishes. So I know a couple of parishes who have a couple of hundred for their parishioners to also, if they're concerned, so the parishioner can take a rat's test. So I know that the CDHB had a particular... Um, uh, um, you could apply to, uh, so that's Canterbury District Health Board for the, sorry, <laughs> um, acronyms, damn things. Um, so the Canterbury District Health Board had um, a, a key person that you could contact if you're a church and your church wanted to become a distributor of those who were, who were really vulnerable. So I guess, um, so there was no, no application, these were free. Um, so I just just your comments on that. Thanks, Trudy. Um, I'll, I'll probably I'll, have others. I'll answer your first one first, and you might have to remind me on the second one. So um, I, I agree with you that administratively the system is heavy-handed. What I recommend to synod superintendents such as yourself who doesn't have a secretary is to identify the people across the synod who might be the contact points and get them to administer for their parishes or areas of parishes or however you want to split your synod up um, and give them the instructions to look after their people. So I don't expect synod superintendents to do all the heavy lifting themselves, but if you can't manage it, I certainly can't manage it and I need to divvy up the country somehow. So that's the answer to that one. The second one is that um, this is not for standard household contacts. It is purely about uh, people that are critical workers going back to work, in which case they'll need access to multiple rats. Uh, so household contacts, if you apply for it free from the uh, health system, you'll get one box uh, for every two people. Um, and you'll get two boxes for three people because every person as a minimum as a standard household contact would need two. So as a critical service worker, you would get multiple boxes and have access to them on a daily basis whenever you go back to work. That is the primary difference. Um, the, for your second question, if I've got this right, absolutely fabulous that the CDHB is giving away those rats or allowing churches to do that. And I'm hoping that more of the Christchurch churches picked up on that and, and we're doing it. Um, 
unfortunately, that won't be the case across the country, is my understanding. So Christchurch is lucky, Canterbury is lucky. Does that answer your questions? I'll take that as a yes. So you'll see far. Sorry, I was busily bobbing away. <laughs> oh, sorry, your, your, your head <laughs> fell off my screen. Yeah, yep. sorry. Okay. So you'll see far. If you'll unmute, please. Thank you, Jody. Uh, the question is really about the uh, critical workers and uh, the definition of, of that. Uh, can pastoral carers uh, of a parish be seen as, as part of that category uh, in a parish that uh, um, partly uh, partly uh, overseen by a presbyter who is working uh, afar, not near to that parish, and therefore the presbyter is depending pastoral her, uh, her pastoral responsibility on the pastoral carers uh, of of the parish. That's what happened to my parish. Uh, can pastoral carers be seen as part of critical workers or, or, or not? Well, look, I would say yes, um, because again, it's, it's a form of community outreach that we're doing and, and whether I'm stretching the boundaries of it or not, I don't really care. Um, you know, we're looking after other people and we need to make sure the people doing the looking after are safe to do so. And the, the two questions around this is, um, are they, and what are they, what work are they undertaking? So yes, they, they meet the criteria there. And the second one is, do they have a COVID positive case in their household? So it's those two criteria that need to be met. Um, and pastoral carers, ministers, yes, I'd say they fall into that category. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any concerns or questions or? Then um, what will happen after this? I will post this Zoe, the PowerPoint presentation online. I'll be sending out another email through to our Synod superintendents who, as Catherine points out, may uh, then delegate through across their synod for other representatives to take care of the, the information, the email that contains the code that you use when you apply online to get your rats if you're a critical care worker. And that's it. Um, at this stage, please check the website for Friday's Zoe. If I do go downhill, it's going to be cancelled because of COVID, and so be it. So thank you very much, everybody. Kaki dear.